Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome again to the Bangalore Theory Seminar series. Uh, this week we are excited to have Alanta Newman uh, as our guest speaker. Alanta is a CNRS researcher at the G Scope Labs in Grenoble, France. Her main research interests are approximation algorithms, particularly rounding, linear, and semi definite programming relaxations. So today she has very kindly agreed to give a talk on uh, correlated rounding for correlated clustering. So uh, let's welcome Alanta and over to you. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, very nice of you to invite me. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about uh, correlation clustering. And um, this is a joint work with uh, Ben Sankhorn Dad, who's a researcher at Google, and uh, Ryong Lee, who's a faculty at University of Michigan in the, in the US. Yeah. So the, the problem, the uh, correlation clustering problem, maybe you've heard of it, but just to make sure that we uh, have it well-defined. So we're, we're given a complete graph, and every edge is either a plus or a minus. Um, and we want to find a partition of the vertices such that we minimize the number of, of disagreements or incorrect edges. So a, a plus edge, you want them to be in the same, the endpoints to be in the same cluster, and a minus edge, you want them to be in different clusters. And you, you don't know the number of clusters in advance, but I mean, you could assume you know it if you want, because it's only between one and n, um, but, uh, you, but you, 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 you don't need to know it normally. And um, so, so this is the problem. So for example, suppose I give you this graph, so green are the plus edges, these are the edges that you want them to be within a cluster, and the red are the edges you want to be um, between clusters. Um, then if you have this cluster in here, you can see that the cost is six. There, there's actually five green edges that are crossing this cut, so those are errors. And there's one red edge inside a cluster, so that's that's six, so that's the, that's the objective function. Um, we, we will come back to make sure we, we know it well. Okay, so Another way you can um, to, uh, it, it, like to find the input is just to only draw the plus edges. This is natural. So for example, like this a graph would look like this, and then it's, it's has simpler to, to see. Um, and then all edges that we didn't draw are minus edges. <clears throat> and this, is, this problem is also known kind of in graph theory as cluster editing. And here you're given a graph, say the graph of plus edges, and you want to modify the graph, either change or plus edge, uh, or actually in their case, just remove the, the, the edge from the graph or add an edge to the graph so that you can partition the edges into cliques. And you want to change, you want to make the minimum number of modifications, either adding an edge or removing an edge so that, so that it, the edges can be, are partitioned into cliques. It doesn't matter how many cliques, just that just the number of changes is the objective function. That's called cluster editing. And it, so this is exactly the same problem in terms of the, you know, the, the optimization problem is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, okay, so for example, if we have a graph like this, and now we remove the, the we, we, we don't draw the minus edges, then, uh, we, then we have this graph on the right. Can you see my mouse when I move it? You can see it? Yes, yes. Okay, okay good. I just want to show I have a pointer. Okay, so um, yeah, so if we, if we, we don't have the red edges, then it's easier to see. So now you can see that there are five edges crossing the cut. And then you have this one pair of vertices with no edge. So it's, it's the same problem. OK, so, so now the problem um, um, maybe is, is clear. OK, so um, the, just to give the general background, so the, the, the problem um, is, is based on uh, um, sort, of, sort of aggregating or um, combining a pairwise information that's easy to get. So it's somehow easy to compare edges. You just ask maybe um, you know, two to people um, if they're friends or enemies or something. And you want to uh, then um, put this information together and, but it can be inconsistent. So globally, it can be inconsistent when you get this local information. So you want to compare, co uh, combine these uh, pairwise, this pairwise information, that's, that's the problem. So just another comment, another way of um, viewing the, the problem is that if you knew you had Q clusters, then you could also raise the problem in terms of linear mod, linear equations mod p. So every plus edge would be, you want them to have distance zero, so they would just be the same value. And then every um, minus edge, you want them to be uh, 
different. You want to have different labels. So it's, it has some relation sort of to, to like linear equations, in my opinion. Um, it's a special case. And then there, there are also some weight, weighted problems where the, that have been considered maybe even earlier than the correlation question problem, where the clusters are um, convex combinations of clusters, and now you want to find a single cluster that kind of best represents all the clusters. So it has different ways to generalize the problem. Okay. But for now, we're just going to consider the unweighted problem. Okay. So the, the history of this problem, that, um, <clears throat> Is it was first introduced in like in theory literature by Benzel, Blum, and Chawla in 2002, and they they had they introduced many variants of the problem, maximizing agreements and minimizing disagreements on complete graphs and general graphs, and they considered all kinds of variants of the problem, and specifically for the case of minimizing disagreements on a complete graph, they gave a constant factor approximation. That was, that was one of their results. There's several in the paper. And then not too long after, there was a four approximation based on a linear programming re region growing by Charakar, Guruswamy, and Worth. And they also showed APX hardness. So they showed that there's no p-task for this general version that I, that I defined. And they also showed that the integrality gap for the natural, there's a natural LP relaxation, which we will see in a minute. And they showed that this integrality gap is two. So they got four and you know, now the gap is between four and two. And then uh, later on um, with, with uh, Neuron and Louis Charkar, we have a paper where we, we gave a three approximation and also a 2.5 based on LP rounded. And then 10 years later, there was an improvement used on, uh, based on the LP rounding. They got a better rounding function. And uh, so it's 2.06. Um, but it's still, it's, it's the, you know, the question is, can you get to two? And maybe you can even get better than two. So the APX hardness is some very, very small number, like 1.005 or something. Um, maybe it's bigger than that, um, but it's not near two. And so, so these are the, <clears throat> the questions. Um, okay. So, um, so the first, uh, the, the result that we discussed today that we present is that we can get a two plus epsilon approximation with running time that's uh, in, um, re related inversely to, to epsilon. And then we can get something better than two, slightly better than two also that, that's inversely proportional to epsilon. So the, 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 that's what we're going to show now. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So let, let's go back to the, the, the problem. Okay, that was just the background. Okay, so first you wanna know, I mean, I, if there's always a clustering, a, a perfect clustering, it can be an input, is there a perfect clustering? So here's a simple example where there's no perfect clustering. So suppose you have a triangle, so you have two plus edges and a minus edge. And there's um, up to symmetry, there's four ways to partition, uh, to partition the vertices, so four solutions. And one of them has, the, uh, they, all, they all have a cost at least one. There's always one disagreement. And like the first one you can see has cost three because this minus edge is misplaced and the two plus edges are, are crossing the cut. And when they all in different clusters, you have the two plus edges that are, are disagreements, they're errors. And when cost one, because this my, um, the minus edge is inside a cluster, et cetera. And here we have cost one because the plus edge is crossing the cut. So there's always a, a cluster. There's no clustering that is perfect for this. And you can see because the minus edges want to be apart and the plus edges, they want to be all in the same cluster. <clears throat> okay, so that's one type of triangle. And it turns out that there's four types of triangles depending on the plus and the minus edges. And the other three types are good triangles in the sense that they can be clustered perfectly. So you can see that, um, uh, the, the, for example, the first type of good triangle where every edge is a plus, plus, plus edge, every edge is plus, uh, you can just put everybody in the same cluster and there are no errors. Um, and the, the second one, you can put everybody in a, a separate cluster and there are no errors. And here you can put this plus edge together in a cluster and there are no errors. So you only have one type of bad triangle. 
So you use the bad triangle to get a lower bound on your optimal solution. Okay, so suppose I have a, so this is an approximation algorithm and we have a minimization objective function. So we just wanna find a lower bound on opt and ensure that we get like two times that lower bound or three times that lower bound. That's our, our goal. So one, one natural lower bound is to look at the set of, of disjoint bad triangles, right? If you find edge disjoint bad triangles, that's clearly a lower bound because they each have to pay one. So in this, in this picture that I drew here, um, the, um, uh, there's one, one edge disjoint bad triangle. So you see if I take this triangle here with the solid lines and I remove it, there are no more triangles. There's just one uh, edge disjoint bad triangle. So the lower bound is, is just one. Okay, but now an, a better way to do a lower bound is a fractional packing of bad triangles. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so here you can see that each two green edges, they, they correspond, they uniquely define a triangle. Um, so there's three triangles here. So if I give each of them one half, then each edge is used at most once, to the extent once. So the, by fractional packing of triangles, I, I take all the triangles, I give them a fractional weight between zero and one. And if I look at an edge and I look all all the triangles that use that edge, it cannot be more than one. That, that's what's a fractional pattern of triangle. And you can see that this is also a lower bound than up because um, every disagreement, every fractional triangle kind of, whatever its contribution to the fractional packing is, it has to contribute that to up. Um, if up were less than that, then there would be some, some fractional triangle that wasn't, um, wasn't counted. So, uh, here you can here you here you get 1.5. So if you use a fractional packing, you get something better than than one, just using the edge joint triangles, which is like an integer packing. And because it has to be an integer, it implies that the lower bound is two here. And indeed, you can find a clustering of cost two. Like for example, if you put these two vertices together and these are in separate clusters, then you have these two green edges are are errors. Okay, so that that's the, that's a fractional lower bound. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's go over the, the three approximation for correlation clustering. And the reason we go over this algorithm when we didn't like mention, say, the four approximation or the original approximation from Blum and Bansal Chella, Bansal Blum and Chella, uh, is because th this is actually the algorithm that all the, the out, so far, all the, all the algorithms that are three or better actually use are variations of this algorithm. So we, we need to give it for the background. So, so the algorithm is a follow, as follows. We, we pick a random a pivot. So we pick a, a vertex, a, a vertex uniformly at random. And every um, uh, other vertex that's adjacent to P, so P is your pivot vertex that you pick uniformly at random. And every other vertex that's adjacent to P, you put it in P's cluster. And every vertex that's, that's not adjacent to P, you put it in the quote, remain this set in the circle which we call the remaining set so there's like this is a cluster and this is to be determined later and then we recurse on the remaining set and this gives you a vertex partition okay so the first thing to notice about the algorithm is that if uh, if the instance has a perfect clustering so there are no bad triangles <clears throat> then there are well actually no bad triangles implies and maybe it's not obvious that it implies that there's a perfect clustering, but in fact, if there are no bad triangles, then the algorithm makes no mistakes. So there's, it gives you a solution of zero. So what, why is that? So if, if um, P uh, makes a mistake inside this cluster, that must have been because it was a red edge between U and V. Because <clears throat> if P is adjacent to U and V and U and V are both in the cluster, then U and V were both adjacent to P on, on plus edges. So maybe there's an error, so this must be like this red minus edge. But that's a bad triangle, right? Okay. Or P can be um, adjacent to some vertex U on a green edge, and uh, and then V is adjacent or incident to a red edge, and maybe there's an error going across the cut, which would be a green edge. But then you would have a green, green, red triangle. So you'd also have a bad triangle. So all, all the errors can be attributed to bad triangles, and if you don't have any bad triangles, it won't, it won't make any errors. Okay, and it's also um, 
interesting to notice that this is sort of exactly the same algorithm as a very natural heuristic for finding a maximal stable set in the graph of plus edges. So you would just take a vertex P and everybody that's an incident to it out on an edge or on a plus edge, you would throw it, throw it away and you would recurse on the remaining set. So it's, it's, it's exactly the same uh, algorithm. Okay, so, so that's, the, that's the algorithm. Um, okay. So now I want to uh, see- Hi, so yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry to interrupt. So, I, so, so, so this works for all P's, right? It doesn't matter what you choose as the vertex P in this case when there are no bad triangles. Uh, it, that, that's a good point, right. So if there are no bad triangles, you, you don't need to pick P at random. You just pick any P. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So it, it, <clears throat> in general, the randomness um, helps for the analysis. Okay. So now just to see that it's a three approximation, uh, we, we can see that uh, C opt is a number of disagreements. Okay, so there's some, we don't know what it is, but there's some number of disagreements in the optimal cluster. And we let the cost of the algorithm, C, the CKW be the cost of the, of the quick cluster algorithm. And we, and we want to show that this, the number of errors we make is, or disagreements is at most three times that. So, Edge, uh, according to what I just said before, all errors can be kind of attributed to these bad triangles. So edge ij is a disagreement if triangle pij is, is chosen and, and p is a pivot, then ij will be an error. Um, and, and, and oops, what did I do? Okay, I made the slide bigger. Okay. Um, so if, if uh, and if, and if this is a plus plus minus triangle, Okay, then, that, then this edge will be a disagreement. So to, to, to measure the number of errors you make, so let's say that T is a set of bad triangles. So every error is attributed to a bad triangle and the good triangles, they don't make any errors. So you have the set T of bad triangles. And then if you look at a, a set, a triangle in the set, and you let AT be the event that one of the vertices is chosen as a pivot, then you will get an error. Right, it doesn't matter actually which vertex you pick as a pivot, you will, you will get an error if you pick one, if you pick it as a band triangle. So the, the sum of, the, the expected number of errors you make is just the sum of the probabilities of the event AT for all these triangles, all these bad triangles. And, and it's just this sum of PT. If PT is the probability that this event happens. So, so the, the event, the bad event is just, I have a bad triangle in my remaining set and I pick one of its vertices, then that's that's a that's a bad event. Okay. So somehow I lost the function. Oh, maybe. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't know what I did, but now I can't go to the next slide. Mm. Uh, Okay, I have to go like this. But now my slides don't fit on the screen. Okay, mm -hmm. okay go like that. I don't know. I'm not sure what you see because I, I, I can't see. Oops, this is the wrong slide. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, so, so now we want to show that this, uh, this so as we said, the, the expected value of the algorithm is some of these PTs, which is the uh, event that um, the bad triangle, one of its vertices picked as a pivot. And, and we can show that these PTs over three form a, a form a fractional packing, which we said was a lower bound. And if we can show that, then this shows that this is a, a three approximation. So to, to show this, um, this, is, this is based on the, on the observation that, uh, so suppose uh, E is an edge that's, um, that, that's in a, a disagreement. So it's in a triangle and the opposite vertex in that triangle was chosen to be a pivot. Then the, the probability that BE is, uh, the, the event BE happens, so BE is a, a disagreement given that this uh, triangle uh, AT, the event AT happens, is, is just the probability that BE happens given that AT happens times the probability of AT. And this is just one third of PT. 
so the probability that a half, AT happens is PT, and the probability that um, it's actually edge E, because there's three, given that the triangle uh, T is fixed, there's three edges. So the, the fact, um, the probability that it's actually uh, edge E that is, is the error is just one third, given that this triangle is fixed. And that's, that's due to the fact that we pick the vertices, the pivots uniformly at random. So we pick them uniformly at random, and for every three vertices, it's equally likely that, I, given that I picked one of them, that I picked a particular one of them. So, so now you can see that actually the, the um, for, any, for any edge, it's in a, in a lot of triangles. It has a lot of third vertices that form triangles. And only one, it can only, if, if, if it's an error, it can only be attributed to, to one of those events. Only one, those are disjoint events. Only one of them can happen. So, so they form a probability distribution and that's why the set of PTs is, um, is at most one. Okay, so that's the lower bound. Here. So here you're using like a linear program, but it's um, implicit uh, and you, you don't actually solve it. And you get this uh, three approximations. Okay, so, so using this using this analysis, <clears throat> you, you can show, and this was in our original paper, that um, you, you can just, you, you just need to do a triangle by triangle analysis. Uh, for, uh, for example, for weighted triangles. Um, and you, I mean, I, I won't go into the details, but you can, you can write the uh, an analysis such that um, the, the, the ratio is just the, 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 it, the approximation ratio is just the worst case ratio of the weight of a triangle divided by the contribution that it has to make to the uh, objective function. So for example, in, a, in the general case, a bad triangle has, has weight three because there's three edges and it has to contribute one. I mean, these, these are all bad triangles. So that, that's where you get the approximation ratio of three. And in, in, in fact, in a, in a much more complicated way, you can also show that if you round the LP relaxation, it's also just a triangle by triangle analysis. Um, so uh, we, we will show that more clearly in a minute. So uh, and um, so so after after this, so in the work of um, Chowla et al, um, they gave a slightly different way of seeing that you could write it as a triangle by triangle analysis, but the ratios, of course, were the same. So the the, the, the formula for each of the ratios is, is the same as what, what we had, but they, they wrote it in a kind of a better way because they got rid of the PT. You, you, like for the general case, when you have a, a LP, you don't really need these PTs anymore because um, you already have an LP uh, to charge it to. So you don't need this kind of phantom lower bound. So anyway, they, they, they are this, the end of the day, the analysis is the same, um, but it's sometimes helpful to actually have it in the way that they chow, chow it all wrote it. So what, what they did is they use the same formula as we, as we did for the LP. So the formula uh, turn, turns out to be the, fo the following. So for every triangle, we have some LP cost. Um, and we see that in a minute. And the, the quantity that we want to compute is um, the probability that an edge is violated, meaning like a, if it's a plus edge, it gets in the, uh, the endpoints get cut, or if it's a minus edge, the endpoints get in the same cluster. So that's the probability that an edge is violated. So this is like the probability that BC is violated given that we picked A as a pivot. And this is the probability that AC is violated given that B is a pivot. And this is the probability AB is violated given that C is a pivot, et cetera. And then the, 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 the contribution to the objective function is the probability, is the LP cost of the edge. <clears throat> times the probability that each edge is decided. So decided means that um, it's one of its endpoints um, was put in the, uh, the same cluster as a pivot P. If both endpoints are in the remaining set, that edge, we don't know what will happen. If that depends on the, on the future round, so it's not decided. And then there's some fraction of the LP cost that you, you give to the, to the future. Um, Okay, so that, that's that's the basic idea of the formula. So so we've seen an example. Okay, so um, 
here's the natural LP relaxation. So I, I gave you another LP relaxation earlier, which was a fractional packing of triangles. And this is, this is a different LP relaxation. So now you have um, distance for uh, every uh, pair of vertices, which is this X i j. So if, if the, and the distances are between zero and one. So if an edge is um, uh, in a different, if i and j are in different clusters, then the distance is one. And if they're in the same cluster, the distance is zero. So in the objective function, for the plus edges, you want the distance to be zero. And for the minus edges, you want the distance to be one. And they obey the triangle inequality. That's a valid constraint. So this is, this is the LP. And now the natural extension to uh, LP rounding is that you pick uh, the pivot, again, uniformly at random. And then for, for a vertex, say I, you put it in, in the other set, in the remaining set, with probability equal to this distance, which is XPI. And you keep it in the set with probability one minus XPI. And this gives a 2.5 approximation. And the reason it gives the 2.5 approximation, I don't have to start right here. Um, okay, so it gives a 2.5 approximation. So um, <clears throat> here, here I'll just give an example. So this is the, um, again, this is what I what I did before, but here's an, here's an example. So uh, you, you have, um, So I have this triangle, and let's and let's and the di these values are the distances. So you have x equals a half, y equals a half, z equals one. And so now you have the in this case the probability that BC is is violated, given that I pick AC as a pivot. It's um um it, it would be one half times one half, right? Which is the one minus x times one minus y. Okay. And the probability that I pick um, uh, a, that AC is violated if I pick B as a pivot. Um, so C def if I pick B as a pivot, C definitely goes in the other cluster. And um, there's some probability that A stays in the same cluster. And that in that case, this would be violated. So that's one half. Okay. Anyway, so so this is this is the this is the formula. And so this was just to give an example. So the probability that BC is decided is just one minus the probability that it's um, um, that they both uh, are in the remaining set, which is x times y, for example. Here, okay. I'm afraid my slides aren't doing it. Okay. So, so you get 2.5 for the LP rounding because uh, you, you, you analyze each of the triangles. You just look at this ratio. And, um, this is what Schramm et al. did, or Michelle et al. And this is what we was originally we did for, to get the 2.5. I mean, sorry, Schall et al. did something more sophisticated. So we haven't gotten there yet. So th this is just the simple LP rounding. So all the triangles are at most two. It's only the bad triangle that's 2.5. So, so remember that in the in the combinatorial quick cluster algorithm, you didn't pay anything except for the bad triangle. But now you're kind of trading off. You you will pay something for say the good the good triangles if they're of this type, like plus 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 or plus minus minus. Um, but you pay less for the bad triangle. So that that's the <coughs> the trade-off. Okay, so then so this is your your kind of the game you want to play. You want to somehow um, you know, see if you can make this triangle have a better guarantee. Okay, so the, the, just to see why you get the 2.5, if you want to improve on the algorithm, if you want to get a better approximation factor, you need to get rid of this 2.5. So, and, and you just need to get rid of this one triangle because there's exactly one triangle that gives you the 2.5. So when I, now, I, now I'm abusing um, terminology because originally I said bad triangle was a plus plus minus triangle. Now a bad triangle is a plus plus minus triangle with exactly these distances on them. So, and that's the only case that gives you the, the 2.5. So why, why, why is it so bad? So in fact, uh, it's really just because of there's one bad pivot. So if you pick, if, if A is the pivot, then the probability that this edge BC is violated is the probability that both X and Y are in the same cluster as A. And that happens with probably one fourth. But the, 
LP contribution of the edge BC is zero because remember that for the minus edges, the contribution is one minus the distance. So it's zero. So it doesn't contribute anything. So locally, it's, it, you know, it's a very bad ratio. But the other two pivots are good pivots in the sense that their the ratio is at most two. So if you pick B as a pivot, then you see C will definitely be in the remaining set. And A will be in the cluster of B with probability one half. So it's the contribution that you risk um, violating this edge AC with probability one half. Um, but the LP cost is um, uh, one four. So the ratio is just two. <clears throat> So it's only this uh, picking A as the pivot that's, that's causing you to be 2.5. If you could somehow get rid of this, you would have two. Okay. So, so to, to give the, um, also to give some understanding of, of, of this two and trying to reach two, there's this integrality gap example um, that's in the paper of, of Charakar. Um, at all. And the, it's, 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 as, it's as follows. So this is, the, remember, this is the plus edges. So all the edges I haven't drawn are, are minus edges. So I have a star with n minus one leaves and vertices and n minus one of them are leaves. And then a, a feasible solution is to put one half on every plus edge, so every green edge here, and, and put one, the distance is one, on every edge that's not drawn here. So that's uh, then all the edges that aren't, the minus edges, they contribute zero to the objective function. So the LP cost is just N minus one over two or, or N over two, pretty much. But the apt, uh, you can see that to, for apt, you need to put the, all, basically you need to put all the vertices in their own clusters. If you put vertices in the same cluster, then you'll start putting red edges inside clusters and you don't want that. So this is basically the optimal solution and it's approximately N. So you have this ratio of two. And in fact, if the, the analysis for the, the LP rounding of quick cluster where you take the random vertex and you put it in the, in the remaining set with probability X PI, um, you might think that our analysis is just not tight and it's actually a two approximation, but it, it's not. It's, it actually is a 2.5 approximation on this um, example. And this, this example only has two types of triangle. It only has minus, minus, minus triangles, where, which the ratio is one on, but they contribute nothing to the objective function. And then it has these bad triangles in the sense that they're plus, plus, minus, and half, half, one. So, so you, you get the 2.5 here. Okay. Uh, so if you want to do better, you have to somehow figure out what to do with these, with these triangles. Okay. So now you can try to sort of change the function. So what you want to do is what, what shall it all do? is they have this one bad uh, type of triangle that's, that's the, the anomaly and, you, you, and everybody else is 2.5 and everybody else is like here at two and you wanna do some trade off. So they, they kind of like you make things better for the bad triangle and maybe you're gonna have to pay something make things a little bit worse for the good triangles. So for example, uh, even, in, even in their paper, they use these different functions kind of in another special case at the end. But for example, you can use like for minus edges, instead of using the X, instead of putting, if you pick P as a pivot, instead of putting I in the remaining set with probability X P I, you could put it with square root X P I. Or you could put, a, um, a for a plus edge, you could put it in the other cluster with X squared. And so you can see that if you use, uh, for example, here you just use, um, the G is just the normal function. It's just the standard LP rounding. But if you change the minus edges, then you will, you will do something better here. So at least you get rid of one of the triangles that has a ratio of two. Anyway, you can play around with this. And this one is very good, except that now you're paying a lot. It's much worse on the bad triangle. So th this is what you, you want to do. You want to sort of change the function. And this is what they, they did, um, Chow et al. And they, they gave this, um, uh, special function for the plus edges, so that we can call it H plus. And for the minus edges, they just use the same function. They just use the X value. So, so the point is you pick your pivot and remember in the combinatorial algorithm, you treated the plus and the minus edges differently. The plus edges went in your cluster and the minus edges, the vertices incident to minus edges, they went in the remaining set. So now 
you use a different function depending on if it's a plus or a minus x. And for the plus x, they use this sort of quadratic function if x was within a certain range. And if it was below a, they just treat it as a zero. So they treated the distance as zero. And if it was above a certain range, then they definitely put it in the other, in the remaining set, et cetera. And anyway, the point is that they, as I said, remember I said there was a trade-off. So they have this trade-off between the, the plus, 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 and the plus, plus, minus triangle. So one was here and one was here, and then go to 2.06. So they kind of improved from this first column to this last column. Okay, so, so that, that's what they did. So it's, it's similar, but they use this very kind of clever function. Um, okay, so now we want to see if we can get better than the 2.06. So you, you can't really improve their function in the sense that they did give a lower bound on some class of rounding functions. It's like 2.025, I think. And, you know, and al already their function is, is very complicated, I think, to analyze and everything. So, okay, so now you want to do something different just to get, to get a, another way to get around this 2.5 that might bring you, um, get you to two. So there, now you have this intuition about adding these constraints on the, on the Shirley Adams hierarchy. So what, 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 so, so on, th on three levels, it's, it's, not, it's not too complicated, the constraints. So you do the following. So now you have this variable, remember we had the variable x, a, b, which was the distance between, <clears throat> between a and b. And so let y, a, b just be one minus x, a, b. So y, a, b is sort of the probability that a and b are in the same cluster. And x, a, b is the probability that they're in different clusters in the fractional solutions. Um, and now you have uh, what it means to have a three level solution <clears throat> is that you have um, for all, instead of just indexing AB, we had XAB before. Now we have like, uh, which gave us YAB, we have YABC and the three possibilities on three variables. And they, and they form a convex combination of all the possible partitions of three vertices all the possible ways to cluster three vertices, so they equal one. <clears throat> so this notation here means Y, A, B, C. So A, B, C are all in the same cluster. And then Y, A, bar, line, B, line, C means A, B, C are all in different clusters. And then, you know, Y, A, C, bar, B means A, C are together and B is separate. So there's just five possibilities and they sum to one and you, you can assume when you put them in your LP, you add these constraints to your LP. Now you get a solution that um, has this for every, every triangle. Yeah. So now we want to see why does this get rid of the bad example? So um, remember we had the star example where we had the N minus um, one uh, leaves and everybody else was a one edge that had, I'm sorry, a minus edge that had distance one. So now suppose we have three edges that have distance one. So we have a star on three vertices um, with three leaves. So let's say that, let's suppose that UV is one, distance one. Um, then what this says is that uh, why any of the five variables <clears throat> that separate U from V, they, uh, sorry, that put U and V together, they have to be zero. Because if the distance between U and V is one, they're always separated. So you get down here that Y, uh, P, U, V can never happen because U, V can never be together. And you also get that here, uh, Y, P, U, V can never be together. Okay. You, you also all get that they are actually all separated. I'm sorry, they can never be all, three of them can never be separated because in this bad triangle, P is, um, with V one half of the time. So if X P V is equal to one half, then P is with V half the time and P is with you half the time. So P, but there's only, you know, 100% of the time, right? So 50% of the time with you, 50% of the time with V. So it can never be separate from both U and V. So this in, in the extreme case where this P U V is a bad triangle, then in fact, you, you, you have this. These are all actually equal to zero. And, and then you also know that, that this happens. So why does it mean you can't have three bad triangles? So if P is 50% of the time with V and P is 50% of the time with U, and then you also had the bad triangle PWV, then P would also be 50% of the time with W. 
But that means that W and U and P are also 50% of the time together. So, so, so if U and W are together 50% of the time, they cannot always be separated. So they, they cannot be uh, have distance one. So you, you just see that you can't get a star on three with three leaves. So you can't have this bad example, the integrality gap example. So you, so you know that most of the time when you want to use linear programming to solve your problem, you want to add constraints that get rid of your integrality gap example and then see if, I mean, if you can't do that, then you don't have a reason to believe the constraints are going to help. But okay, so that's, that's the intuition. So there's two pieces of intuition that we want to look at. First, we get rid of the bad example. And second, we need to, we need to use it for the rounding. Okay. So now, so I, I kind of, I think I did them kind of out of order. But anyway, so we have some intuition why we can't have the star because we just can't have that these three red edges, uh, minus edges are all have distance one simultaneously if, if P, if the edge from P to each of them is one half. Okay. And then, uh, as I said, if, if this is a bad triangle, then these three, these three values are going to be zero. And, and these two values are going to be equal to one half. Okay. So if you could sample from these, this distribution somehow, then you, you, you would be happy because um, you have sort of a negative correlation between U and V. So if I pick P as a pivot, then U and V cannot be together. And exactly one of them will be with P. And if you remember in the other, a few slides ago, when we analyze this bad triangle, P is the only bad pivot. And now this is exactly the behavior that you're getting rid of with P. It's bad behavior can't happen with P anymore. So, um, okay. So, so, so now suppose you had this theorem. So we, we don't have this theorem. This is like a ideal theorem, um, but this is giving you intuition how to get two. So suppose we had like a three round solution to this hierarchy. With these, with these constraints. So for every triangle, we have those five variables sum to one. Um, then, and suppose, suppose we could sample such that um, we, we pick a, vert, a vertex, a pivot P, and then we could include U in the cluster of P with probability Y P U, which is exactly what we were doing before with the LP rounding. And moreover, for every pair of UV, we, we, we would include them in the set with probability YPUV. Okay, that, that's like an ideal case. Um, so, so, so now the algorithm is the same algorithm. You pick the pivot, you formulate random. Every minus edge, we do independently. We can, we can do it with probability XPI or like something else, like we actually use square root of PXI, which we explain maybe later. But the, the plus edge, the plus edges are, are rounded according to this theorem. So each pair of U and V, they get included together in the, in the cluster of P with this probability Y, P, U, V. Okay, so suppose you had this. Then um, you would get this ideal, you get the last column, you get this kind of idealized rounding. I mean, this, this is like ideal because based on this theorem, that's not true. Okay, but you can work out the ratios for all your triangles and now the plus 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 actually is better. It's 1.5. And you got rid of the bad triangle because you got rid of that pivot. And actually the this plus minus minus triangle, they would have a ratio of two. But if you square root a rounding on the distance, then, then it becomes much better. So you might as well use that. So, so that, that's basically how you get two, except that, as I said, that theorem is not true. So, um, okay. but. All right, I'll come to that in a minute. So just to go back to the bad triangle, why, why do you get two? I, I think kind of already said this, but um, the point is, remember this, uh, this, this edge, if you pick A as the pivot, then the, then, um, the probability that BC was violated used to be one fourth, but now it's zero because um, B and C will definitely be separated. So they will definitely be decided. Um, and will definitely be, uh, if it were violated, they would be together and that can't happen. Okay, so you, you get this ratio of zero over zero and the other one's a ratio over two. So the, the ratio ends up being two. Because remember the ratio is the sum of the, the, the probability that the edges are violated divided by the, the sum of the 
LP contributions. Okay, so so that's why we we we, we that's the intuition for why we can get rid of two using this this rounding. Okay, but now we 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 cannot really use this theorem. But what we can do is make an approximate version of the theorem. So using these techniques in Raghavendra Tan, for example, um, if you have a solution to R rounds of the hierarchy, so not just three, but R rounds, then you can show that you can sample from the marginal distribution exactly. And you can almost get this pairwise correlation when you pick the set S. S is the vertices that are going to be in the pivot with P. So this is like a constraint uh, satisfaction problem because you have just two variables, zero or one. Are, am I with P or not with P? Okay. Um, and so, so, so that's why we get the epsilon in our, um, in the statement. Remember I said it was two plus epsilon in time n to the one over epsilon squared. Um, okay. So, so, so that's the, that's the main uh, theorem. So just to mention a little bit of intuition, um, ha, how do you show that this, uh, this rounding algorithm with, that um, gives you this joint distribute, almost approximation to this joint distribution of U and B exists. So uh, you can show that there exists a, a seed set S, which is of size R minus one, so it includes the pivot and then you pick R minus three other variables, other vertices. And for this seed set, there's a convex combination of solutions, each with some probability, that's the definition of convex combination. And you pick one of them with that probability. And that's your solution for the, for the seed. But the seed is only R minus two and you did R round to the hierarchy. So for every other vertex, it gives you a conditional probability of what value that vertex should be. So remember, this is just a zero one. Am I in the pivot of P or not? Um, um, okay, so the, so the point is that um, all the, for every seed you can show, you can measure how close it is to this uh, correlated distribution, uh, this, 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 this joint distribution. And this is based on some notion of, of um, correlation between the variables. And you can show that for at least one of the seeds, th this uh, correlation is bounded. It's at most one over R. So for every seed, you can try it. And you, you know what your variables Y, P, U, V are. And you can see if you were actually, if it was a good seed or not. So you, you have to try all of them. And, and that, that's how you find one of them. And then you, um, yeah, so that, that's how you find the, that's how you use the, the Shirley atom. Okay, but now you have, uh, you, you do have some technicalities that we didn't, I didn't mention. So, so now you have, uh, you, you have this error. So every triangle has actually some error in the ratio. So the triangles, <clears throat> that's, not, that's not really a problem, but the triangles that contributed almost nothing to the objective function they can't afford this error. So actually you have to round them differently. So if you look in the paper, that's why you have this kind of technical case. So the plus edges have to be divided into <clears throat> medium edges, which you, whereas you use this uh, correlated rounding. And then they are, if they're very um, small edges, they're in danger of being in a triangle that doesn't contribute anything to the objective function. They, they get rounded differently, like with the X squared function. So, so, so it ends up being a little bit technical, but anyway, this is the main idea. So now, so that, that brings you to two or two plus epsilon, essentially. So now you want to go something beyond two. And again, you use, you do use the Shirley atom because remember we said that you can't really have a, a star on th with three leaves where all three triangles are bad. You only kind of have at most two <clears throat> bad triangles that have the same center. So we call P a center of a bad triangle if it's an incident to these edges that are close to one half. So you can show that every P is kind of a center for a most two bad triangles. And then this, and then, and then it's always um, a center 
for a good triangle. So a bad triangle is formally uh, a triangle where you have two edges that are very close to half. So within some one, one half plus or minus epsilon, where epsilon here is um, one twelfth. And the third edge is, a, is, is one minus epsilon, at least one minus epsilon, so at least 11 twelfths. And a good triangle is one where the third edge is strictly less than 11 twelfths. So they, they're disjoint. And when I say good triangle, it's just a triangle where the ratio, if you do that ratio calculation, what its contribution is, it's, it's much less than two. So then you can take the, the formula, the way um, to compute the approximation ratio, the way Chell et al. write it, because it's simpler. And you can, for example, you could take each triangle and you could put it three times in the sum and then, um, you know, it's the same thing, you just take the sum over all triangles, represent, re represent them three times, and you group them according to their pivots. And then you, for every um, two bad triangles, you show there's a good triangle. So for every two triangles that are equal to two, or the ratio could be two, there's going to be a third triangle where it's less than two. So it's just an amortized analysis. And this is a little bit technical. But then you can show that you get something better than two this way. But this is also the key idea here is from the three levels of the Shirley Adams hierarchy, because you just need three levels to get rid of this, to be able to make this pay, pay uh, trade off. But for the other, to get to two, you need the R levels because you need that theorem, that main theorem um, that you can, you can round according to, uh, you can almost get the, this joint distribution. Okay, so that, that's the last thing I wanted to say. So <clears throat> I just mentioned some open problems. So there are several open problems, of course. So you could try to get to two without the hierarchies because remember that the LP relaxation had integrality gap of two and you could still maybe reach it somehow, but it seems difficult, but you know, okay. And um, maybe you could get a better bound. It's, it's probably not tight, definitely not tight. Um, there's other related problems like feedback arcs on tournaments. So um, this is also related to uh, correlation clustering and it has like the same algorithm that gives you three approximation, but it has a p-test. But nevertheless, you can try to analyze it in triangle by triangle analysis. And at least at least with a computer program, I, I think I know how to get two for this. But it's not, maybe, I don't know, I don't know if it's interesting because uh, you already, it, it, the running time would be n to the one over epsilon squared. and you already have a p-task, but still there could be something interesting there. And there's other, many other three uniform hypergraph problems um, that maybe you could use this for, although, okay, I don't know. And um, there's some gap in the maximization problem, but I guess that, that doesn't have so much to do with this talk, I guess. But uh, I, I know that they they have a, um, yeah, the Charakar Guraswami Worth paper also, not only do they have four approximation and the APX hardness and the integrality gap, they also had a very nice algorithm for the maximization problem, but that still has some gap. I think in their paper, they also have the gap for the uh, for that case as well. Okay, so I, I, will, I will stop there. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to take questions if you have any. Thanks, Alanta. Uh, I guess if there are any questions we can take now? So uh, I myself had one. Uh, so maybe I missed this, but where where does the where do we need that the graph needs to be complete, or what doesn't work if the graph is not complete? Okay. So if the graph isn't complete, then you can't like for example the original three approximation. Uh, it will leave some vertices. And determined, right? Because it will put some vertices in the set, and then it puts the minus edges in the remaining set. But what do you do with the edges where the, the vertices where there's no edges between them? Um, so that, that that's that's the problem. So the algorithm not really well defined when you don't have a complete graph. But I mean, there are algorithms for the for the correlation clustering problem on, on, a, on a general graph. Um, 
maybe it was in the, also in the paper chart for Griswold Worth, or uh, there are other papers. I, I don't remember. I think I think they have a log n approximation. So so definitely you could consider this case, but it just doesn't. This algorithm doesn't work immediately in that case. So uh, I have a question. So what, what are the algorithms you talked about in this talk uh, are randomized algorithms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what is known about deterministic algorithms? I mean, all, all the roundings that you employed were randomized, I suppose. Yeah, so um, I, th I think they can be de-randomized because so for the original algorithm, there was a paper by Anke van Zoylen and David Williamson many years ago, and they showed that you could de-randomize everything. Um, and I think you can de-randomize these, these algorithms using their techniques. Or... OK, thanks. I don't know. Okay. Also, this yeah. is the un unweighted version of the problem, right? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you are. So what about the weighted version where the edges have some weights? So yeah, so in the correlation clustering problem, the general weighted version is sort of like every edge has a fraction plus and a fraction minus and they add up to one. And this is usually called probability constraints. Um, and in the Chow et al. paper, they get 1.5 or maybe they get 1.501, but I think they get 1.5, I don't remember, okay. And they use their function um, no, they used the x squared and the square root of x, I think, and they got 1.5. So I, I did try at some point with just experimentally with the computer program to see what, what ratio you would get if you if you did what they did. So what they do is they if they have an edge and it's like, you know, three fourths plus and one fourth minus, then with probability three fourths, they use the plus rounding function and with probability one fourth, they use the minus rounding function. And I tried this using our rounding functions. And it just wasn't clear that it was better than 1.5. So like it, it, it doesn't seem to be better than what they had for the, in the weighted case. It, oh. it might give you a better, sorry, it might give you a better analysis. I'm so, sorry, Andrew, what did you think? Right, so another problem would be just that the edges have weights. I mean, the colors remain the same or the positive and the negative signs remain the same, but the edges have simply weights, I guess. Is that, oh, uh, so you is that a worthwhile direction to consider? But but then you have a general like this should be as hard as the un, as the general case where some edges aren't there because once you start giving weights to the edges, then you know an edge with a really high weight is really important and an edge with very small weight is pretty much zero. So then you start having a general graph and then there are hardness. I think there are hardness results for general graphs like you can't do better than log m. So okay, I don't I don't know if um. If, if you had some structure on the weights, you could probably do something like triangle inequality. But then that gets to the, the cases that they that they solved. I think they have triangle inequality on them. All right, the two types of weight functions they have are probability, where you have, it's called probability, where you have the plus and the minus, and they sum to one. And then triangle inequality is when you triangle inequality on the minus edge weights. And so if you had some structure, then maybe you could do something. But I don't see how to get better in these cases necessarily. Maybe you can do something. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions? Okay. If not, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Uh, thanks, Alanta, for a great talk. Okay, thank um, you. Thank you.